All right, guys, I'm back. I'm moving on from all this stuff. Uh, I'm really disappointed in, in you guys, though, at least the ones that commented on on the last video, because, like, regardless of whatever happened, it was she's still a person that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And to attack me and stuff instead of, like, empathizing with me or anything like that that hurt you know that fucking sucks so but i'm moving on i'm trying to get my mind off of all this so uh, i recorded like a video of like me processing everything and moving on and, and all that uh it's like an hour and a half worth of footage from like a week week and a half uh, I don't know if I'm gonna post that. I don't think I'm gonna post that or whatever. I don't really care anymore. So let's just get into this. Like this video is just gonna be me talking about just looking at cryptocurrency news and stuff just to get my mind off of everything. And uh, with time, like everything will be back to normal or or different, I guess. All right, so I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work how I want it to work. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to do whatever. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is the cryptocurrency prices going up uh, in the last couple days. Uh, anyone that knew uh, like stock predictions or, or has watched all this stuff, uh, whenever stuff drops down like super low, it always uh, bounces up a little bit and whatever. Uh, I don't know what to say is going to happen in the future or anything. I haven't looked too much deeper into it. Uh, so, But I think that $86, $80 Ethereum or whatever is, is probably the bottom now. Now uh, I'm just going to go through these Coindesk articles first and I'll summarize like whatever I read. So the first one I'm going to read is this uh, crypto is down, so why am I why am I smiling article. Uh, I recorded the whole thing, now I have to record it all over again. So this article is just uh, to encourage people that, uh, that are like upset or disappointed about the low prices, just saying like, oh, the community is still there and there's still like reasons to build blockchain stuff and, and all that and and don't worry and and uh learn from uh learn from the past and all that stuff nothing really too important i'd say uh this next article three conflicts that will shape blockchain tech in 2019 honestly i don't give a shit about any of this cryptocurrency future articles excitement or whatever anymore like none of this matters if like i don't have anyone to share it with and just share my life with and stuff like in the past i could focus on this because i thought that doing this would make something out of myself and then that will find me someone to to spend my life with and now like that didn't work so there's like no purpose for me in this stuff anymore so this first one just talks about ideology versus product market fit for startups that push their ideology versus products that push their products and where they fit in the market uh, i guess this is trying to say that uh, startups need to push their ideologies first and uh, that's going to be hard when they're decentralized and stuff like that uh, to organize uh, to get people to believe in their ideologies uh, I fear like the same thing is going to happen that happened with like Windows 10 and with uh, what was it SOPA or CISPA or whatever like all this privacy stuff and, and Windows auto updating and everything uh, no one's like Microsoft didn't change, none of these like privacy internet things really changed and we just had to uh, 
us as consumers were the ones who had to give in to all this stuff. This next one talks about market capitalization versus adoption, and it says that just because there's a high market cap or whatever doesn't mean that there's a lot of people adopting uh, cryptocurrency or the uh, products and platforms that are being used. And uh, that's true. That's been true for a long time. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's any different than like the internet a long time ago. Like it took a long time for people to use email and and realize that uh, that it's useful and, and whatever. The last one is believers versus non-believers. And this goes into, uh, to me at least, the cryptocurrency community just it says that this basically says that all the cryptocurrency believers have to uh, keep drilling their ideals and values and and promise of blockchain onto all these people and keep fighting and arguing and and whatever until they dent and and realize that until they give in basically uh, which isn't like uh, it's not really that good for a person's psyche to just be argued with constantly and not listened to and and uh, just combat it all the time until they eventually give in. And, and that's the, the problem that I see with the cryptocurrency community is that they keep they keep attacking people like this. Like I talked about this with Maria Paula Fernandez and Chelsea Palmer and them attacking Hive.1. And then all these attacks on like whoever they label as the alt right, and and uh, I didn't do a video on it, but uh, uh, a lot of posts showing uh, that people heavily involved with Ethereum are anti alt right and uh, just don't even listen to any information or statistics or or actual like research and science and all that. Uh, they just block everything out and just push their beliefs onto people. Uh, it's it's not good, not good at all. This next article I'm reading, uh, layoffs underway amid adjustments, Bitcoin miner Bitmain confirms. So I guess I didn't read it yet, but I guess it's gonna be talking about Bitmain is now having to lay off people and stuff. Uh, we saw uh, consensus, uh, which is like, They've been around since like the beginning of Ethereum, like organizing projects uh, to build on, organizing teams to build on Ethereum. And and uh, I think they might be uh, helping with some of the legal stuff to get like laws passed and stuff for, uh, for cryptocurrency and all that as well. Uh, but they had to lay off like a ton of people and a ton of projects because maybe this is just how like it needs to work where like, when you're an incubator, I guess, you bring in all these projects and then uh, slowly you'll find, uh, like that's probably the best way to find uh, which people are dedicated to that project and which ones can accomplish it and which ones can make a profit and make a successful business out of it and all that. Uh, it sucks for the developers in consensus that, that we're working on their own projects. Uh, really, it's like only the strong survive and they should have uh, worked on a better project and, and got their shit together, I think. And, uh, and also should have had the foresight to, to have a backup plan. Like I'm sure like inside of consensus, like all these people, it, just didn't come out of nowhere that there were going to be layoffs and everything like the price has been declining heavily in the last year and uh from like ethereum was like 1300 and then it dropped down to like 80 or 85 or something like that like i don't i'm not sure if consensus even cared like i said they just bring in as many projects as they can to find the successful ones and the ones that'll come out on top and all that and be actually useful. Really, like, I guess these consensus projects, uh, these small, like, companies, and not companies, but, like, startups, they should have been working on, on a business model and, and all that, like, from the get-go to, to fund them. Like, one of the very first things with Ethereum, with Ming Chen, 
uh, was uh, was working so much to get Ethereum funded and make sure that they were set up and had a, a like a business model and whatever so that they could be funded and, and be able to work and everything like that uh, and, and just focus on developing without having to focus on on money and all that. So these startups, they they should have been focusing on how to support themselves and, and, and all that before like developing all these projects. And I guess maybe what could suck is that consensus now has all of these ideas and I don't know like where the IP went or if it's all open source for all these startups and whatever. But at the very least, consensus now is all these ideas from all these people and all their projects and whatever that if they wanted to, they could build off of them in the future. And I don't want to like bring myself into this too much, uh, but this is why one of the reasons I do ask for donations is because I can't just support this channel and myself forever just off of my own cryptocurrency money and everything. Like, realistically, like that money, like I do want to have like a family or like a girlfriend and be able to do like my own stuff and whatever. And, uh, and you know, that, all that money's just going to run out eventually, so... I mean, I'll do it for as long as I can and I'll make sacrifices as far as not going out as much and and all that so that uh, we can keep this going. But anyway, also, I guess for like exchanges like Coinbase, I don't I didn't finish reading this Bitmain article yet, but exchanges like Coinbase and whatever, like when there's a market bubble and there's all these new users flooding in to buy cryptocurrency, Coinbase does have to ramp up their support and everything. So I can see like uh, these support positions for Coinbase uh, people being laid off from that because there's not as many support tickets and, and all that. So so this Bitmain article does say that uh, supposedly, or there, there's no confirmation on this, but uh, it's just like rumor, I guess, that more than 50% of Bitmain's uh, headcount Bitmain's employees will be laid off. Uh, and then goes on a little bit later to say that uh, some projects will be like entirely gone and uh, so I, I don't know what projects Bitmain was working on but yeah so this article also says that Bitmain has about 3,100 people working uh, for them and uh, at the beginning of the year there were only about a thousand people so throughout the year they hired 2,100 people this next article uh, Bulls under pressure after Bitcoin price retreats uh, from 4K. It just basically says that the support is around 3,675. Uh, the Bitcoin bulls were rejected at 4,200, and that's when the sell-off happened. So we would say if uh, the price goes above 4,200, then then it'll keep going up. And uh, they also say if the price drops below 36.50, then it'll go down. This next article, court win for BitThumb uh, exchange in case of crypto investors, $355,000 hack. So this guy uh, deposited $355,000 into this BitThumb Korean exchange. So it was 400 million Korean won. Uh, then he was like hacked or something and someone ended up uh, selling, uh, trading his his money for Ethereum and then transferring the Ethereum out of the account. So then this guy sued uh, BitThumb's parent company, which is BitCKorea.com uh, in civil court. And uh, the court sided with BitThumb saying that they're not responsible for uh, the hack and the loss of money. Uh, I guess like this guy was also arguing that uh, that his personal data was stolen in some April 2017 data breach and uh, suggested that he might have lost uh, his BitThumb login details uh, and, and they couldn't confirm that. So the judge said that he might have lost his login details from a phishing website or his cell phone might have been hacked. Uh, I mean, like, 
if you did lose your login credentials from an April 2017 hack uh, data breach. Uh, I, I don't know if that was a bit thumb data breach. I'm not sure what, the, let me see what that was about. Looks like they're referencing the Equifax data breach thing for the April 2017. So I guess if that was the case, you would be suing, you would, like it would be Equifax's fault for what happened because of their poor security that led to a data breach that led to you losing your money. Uh, but also it says that I guess Bitthumb had sent uh, 10 SMS, like two factor verification messages uh, before the hacker withdrew the money just to get manual approval. Uh, so if there was manual approval, I don't see how this guy's money uh, uh, was was sent without his approval unless like his cell phone was hacked as well which uh, like there's the sim like duplicating someone's sim card or, or whatever maybe that happened I don't, I don't know all right guys uh, what am I doing that's this is gonna be the end of the video I don't really want to do anything more I'm kind of you know so yeah Bye.